The butcher, one of the deadliest flies you can present to almost any fish. I have caught salmon, sea trout, brown trout, chub, eid, perch, pike and zander with it. And even a two pound roach fell for it. It is a very old fly, dating back to 1838 or thereabouts. Now, the butcher, fish deep and slow, is a very excellent early season fly, resembling a little fish or fry. And particularly when you have sticklebacks in your trout water, it seems to be all you need to catch big fish. But sometimes small trout are as attractive as big ones, as Ray and Fritz show us here. Very good. Mr. Raimondo Ricardo is showing us how to catch big fish on a butcher. No bother. But, uh, you know what it is. So catch one now. So are you coming? No. I want to see a fish on a butcher. Oh. I think it's probably in the side. It's putting up too much of a fight. Caught in the tail. What did you do here? This is how to catch fish on a butcher. On butcher. I mean, no one else catches them in the mouth, so you have to resort to you have to resort to other techniques. Which fly is it on? You catch oh, oh God. <laughs> Get him finally. Have you got one as well? Oh. <laughs> it needs to be a bit bigger. Oh well. Maybe they grow bigger. I had a good run now. Are they all taking the butcher or? No, I have now here. Is this, isn't it a bog fly, the thick one here? That's a bog one. Yeah. That's a bog fly. Look, yeah. I caught this one in the bog. Oh, not bad. No? Not bad at all, Mr. Not Bob. bad at all. Raimondo is into a fish. He is? Oh! Mighty. Mighty one. And you had two at the same time? Yes, I had two takeaways. And the smoke. Very good. Okay, so. You could have a feed of smoke. Then. Some fish to eat. Yeah. Ah. That's great stuff. Yeah. You need a knife, Mr. Robinson, to cut those fish. I thought you were going to come down and cut them. I did buy a bit. Oh! There are plenty of variations of the fly. My favorite one is tied on a sturdy size 8 trout hook, on which I put, first of all, a layer of thread to get this underway. Ribbing and tag material is silver wire. It isn't silver actually, it just looks like that. Again, the tag gets three turns. Our parrot, our great parrot, 
yields another feather which we can use. I just take a few segments out and tie them in as a tail with aid of the pinching loop. I just bring it here right in front of the tag and there we have our tail. The next thing is the body material. I use Christmas tree decoration that is much cheaper than the stuff you would get in the tackle shops and it does exactly the same trick. I just tie it in. It's very easy to work with actually. Bring the thread forward always thinking that you have to put in a pair of wings and a hacker. So leave some space there. And use this stuff to form a nice bright shiny silvery body. Every magpie would go crazy. Secure that and cut it off. The silver wire is brought around to rip this. Again, well spaced turns. I cut this off. The hacker for the butcher is black and soft. I trim that in the usual way. In other words, take off the fluff and tie it in. This gets two turns. Two turns is more than enough. One, two. And there's the hacker ring. Take this back a wee bit. I'll give it a nice shape. The wings of the butcher are made out of iridescent duck feathers and if you don't have those any other dark grey or black feather will do. I just cut out these feather segments and again I match these, put them right on top of each other Position them so that they just extend the hook and tie them down with a pinching loop. And there we have our feathered friend here. The butcher, the whip finisher, is used to produce this wonderful not. I cut this off. The only thing missing is the obligatory drop of varnish. And I just have to clean the eye. And we have product. There's our butcher. Much of the topic of Hakatarami Hapio. Fresh turn the cashier and the mission of the Java Lisha through.